Dear Log, it is currently Thursday, October 12th as I'm writing this. The Phoenix video isn't even out yet and it's taking a million years to finish, but I've got to put the pedal to the metal and use all the metal I can pedal to finish my Halloween video in time for the 31st. It's time to dug deep and go faster than ever because tis the season to give them something spooky. And what's the only thing spookier than a looming deadline? Uh, how about being an ultra low tier? Whatever! Anyway, I decided to do the video on the damn tree this year. Dear Log, it is now October 14th. It's been two days and I'm struggling to come up with a better introduction than Mock is bad. I, maybe tomorrow. Dear Log, it's October 16th and Diablo 2 Resurrected is a lot more fun than I thought it would be, considering, you know, how brutal the Warcraft remake was and all. And, oh shit, the Mock video. Oh my god, I have no time to get this thing done. Okay, let's go. Um, Mock is bad. Dear Log, Diablo 2 is easier than I remember, but I'm really running out of time, so I gotta go with something quick. How about Mock is an abortion? <laughs> let's go with that, I guess. Whatever! Mock sucks, man. You get mocked by letting a monster die and waiting a really long time, which is fitting because raising one you'll get to watch your soul die in real time as you spend a very long time grinding up terrible stat gains. <laughs> this is a real monster someone entered in a competitive tournament. This was not made as a joke. This was necessary to make the specific build. Not every mock is like this, but I think the fact that it exists says something. Casually mock is a very confusing monster to raise. 200 starting life? Hot damn, that's a head start if I ever saw one. Well, enjoy while well, it actually holds any sort of defensive merit, because by rank S you'll probably have, I don't know, like 250 with that minimum life gain. Bad everything else except for intelligence doesn't help either, but at least he's got the lifespan of a redwood sitting at the second longest in the game behind Raki. As is the case with all these vids though, the stat gains are like, completely irrelevant, so it's time to really bore into why he truly kicks dumps. After some more D2R. Dear Log, it's October 18th and the tree haunts my dreams. Apropos for October I suppose, but he won't leave me alone. He's tormenting me for forgetting about him and not talking about his text. I guess you could say he's mocking me? Oh my god. That's terrible. Just like Mock. Mock me all you want, Mock, you're still bad. Mock is not a strong monster and what that usually means is that it does not have strong text. Headbutt is... incredibly good. I, I've done this bit a few times where I talk about how the monster sucks, blah blah blah, but wait, what's this? Its basics are good? Whoa! I know, but I'm not doing it again here. It's honest to god one of the best basic techs in the entire game. But there's some serious caveats with the goodness of Headbutt that stop Mach from being able to benefit from a god level basic tech. Joker has an incredible basic tech in Death Punch that's probably tied for best in the entire game with Phoenix's beak, but Joker also gets a nearly identical tech that does just a little bit more damage for a little bit more cost in Death Smash in the second slot, meaning half of the arena is Slap City. Joker can run a basics only build that ends up being so profoundly dominant that it's almost guaranteed to be his strongest possible build and has led to basics only Joker being banned in a few formats. You have to learn more techs on Joker if you want him to compete. Everything is a nerf to him. Mach could be a legitimate contender as a more than capable monster of Headbutt's good damage, hit rate, and withering for a cheap cost also occupied in slot 2, but he doesn't have such luck. Mach has no other power techs in slot 2, let alone a good one. He actually has no other power techs at all. So power Mach is at best inconsistent because of the existence of its other basic tech, the intelligence-based leaf gun. Leaf gun is... it's okay, I suppose. It's like exactly on curve for a basic tech, so at least it's not awful, but it's intelligence-based. If a tech with these numbers was also a power tech, it would be mostly inconsequential on a power mock build, but it would really let Headbutt shine, which would probably be more than enough for Mach to be at least a solid mid-tier monster. He'd struggle versus tanks, but otherwise he'd be really good. And very boring. Kinda like Optimal Joker is. Except, you know, he's also good against tanks. Instead, as we take a look at the rest of his text, a very different picture emerges. The opposite, actually. Like I turned on the color inverter. Mach is bad, but very exciting. But, <laughs> but it's exciting in like the exact same way that watching a toddler hit a home run would be the most exciting thing you've ever experienced in your life. There's a chance for some of the craziest shit you've ever seen a monster rancher to happen every time Mach enters the arena. It's just unlikely to work out that way. Dear Log, it's October 19th and Patty Mayonnaise refused to go to the prime with me for the ninth time and I'm getting ready to ascend to another plane by going for the world record for most whippets inhaled in a single sitting. Nobody wants to be a fucking loser, Doug. Anyway, Leaf Cutter is a tech that's okay for its cost. It's very accurate with middle of the road damage, but it struggles to keep Mach above water as it doesn't mesh with the rest of his kit very well. It's a bit lackluster almost explicitly because it has nothing else to play off of. 
You can find techs like this all over the game that do solid chip damage, and they work as a finisher once a significant amount of damage has been dealt, but we're going to see in a second why that's a bit of an issue. Leaf Gatling is Mox's only heavy tech. In fact, it's his only tech with a decent amount of damage attached to it that isn't obscenely expensive. But at minus 14 hit, it's kind of like, <laughs> really not good. Most monsters would expect a tech with this cost and accuracy attached to it to hit for like, at least a force, but not Mach. He's too busy being different. Also, speaking of different, it's not a chain from Leaf Gun. I don't know why Leaf Galling doesn't chain from Leaf Gun, but it is what it is. Twig Gun contains multitudes. It's Mach's weakest attack on the damage side, and at minus 6, it's really funny that this is also his most accurate tech that isn't a basic or hit tech. This tech is most likely Mach's absolute worst regardless of matchup, as most competent tank builds can recover a ton of guts during its long animation. Even Leaf Cutter, which only really has any use sniping fast monsters, would probably be more beneficial against tanks with the 40% additional damage. Withering be damned. Twig Gatling, and you're gonna want to hold on to your hat for this one, is just like Leaf Gatling in that it does not actually chain from its gun counterpart. But because it doesn't chain from gun, this actually only serves to make gun even worse as it's not even needed for its prerequisite. Twig Gatling is not a good tech in the larger canon of Monster Rancher 2 techs, but it's also the first step in uncovering Mach's singular niche as one of the most irritating anti-tanks in the game. Potentially withering 40 guts for 30 is not, like, incredible, but it's okay and the damage is fine. The minus 8 hit is normally what's keeping it as an unstable tech, but with that out of the picture versus tanks, all of a sudden even monsters with extremely quick guts regen will watch as their chances to attack begin to dissipate. Twister is part of a larger archetype of special techs that function similarly. Death Final is probably the most well known of these, but they're everywhere. Heavy withering and damage for 45 to 50 guts and a hit rate that makes the gamble for using it twofold. Twister is more accurate than Death Final and costs a bit less, but the damage and withering do not pack anywhere near the same wall up as Final. Death Semi-Final. Is that anything? It's like Mok didn't really put his whole trunk into it, you know? Kinda crappy, but it's ostensibly one of his better techs. Twister is more full trunked in that sense. It's much bigger damage and withering for 5 more guts. And a frame 1 twister opener is one of the best things Mach can swing versus tanks. Huge damage and no chance of reprisal from the opponent. It's a risky tech through and through against everyone else though, but when you're really bad, risky moves are all you got. Also, wouldn't you believe it, it doesn't chain from twister. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, can you imagine? This is a tech chain, but it's Mach's only tech chain. And Mach's final attack, yeah we're at the end already, is energy steal. Energy steal is like twisters with less force and accuracy, but it drains both life and guts on contact. With Anger Active, this move can be chained into itself over and over, much like Color Pandora's Vital Ritual, and only further cements Mach's obscene anti-tank kit. This move can turn the tide of battle very quickly, it's just that minus 20 hit is an insane liability in most matchups. So what makes Mach bad if it's so good at blowing up tanks? Well, Mach is good at blowing up tanks through a combination of high damage and lockout, where most of the best anti-tanks in the game hyper-focus on one or the other with greater success. Energy Steel sets it apart from a lot of these other type of mons, which is fun, but not covering Energy Steel with at least Twist or Singular is an absurd risk to take unless you can guarantee your opponents aren't going to be running any speed. Leaf Cutter serves as a game closer, but versus any monster where its usefulness really shines, there's a good chance that a single attack from one of Mach's bigger techs will just instantly end the game anyway. And against any monster where these techs instantly end the game, the bizarrely low hit rate makes that unlikely. So Leaf Cutter is kind of in limbo. All of these nukes at different levels of power and cost make a varied and dynamic anti-tank, but that's honestly part of the bigger issue. Tanks aren't great most of the time. In the 3500 stat cap, the heavyweight meta, Mach is a complete non-starter. This is just the sun bleach format where techs are left out in the open, with the light of day illuminating just how good or bad they really are. Defense is a bad stat numerically, and there's enough stat cap to go around to put a ton into life and speed, so tanks are rare. The only meta where the discrepancy between good and bad techs is even more apparent is full max stats, which admittedly takes away a lot of the variety the game has to offer, so, you know, you don't see max stats very often. In 2997 stat cap, the middleweight meta, tanks are significantly more popular as stuff like Ripper can eat through attacks with impunity and retaliate with an onslaught of damage on their own. Mach is better in this format than in 3500, but only due to there being more tanks. Though with how restrictive Guts regen is when it comes to measuring capability as a tank in this game, lots of his withering ends up getting brushed off anyway. So it comes down to mostly just damage with Mach in this format, and there's other monsters that hit way harder. In the 1999 stat cap, the welterweight meta, Mach does about as well as any other monster. This format is wildly swingy as there isn't enough cap to go around to really make consistent builds. While his leaf cutter and twisters do in theory prepare him for anything, using the wrong tech in the wrong matchup is devastating for him. Everything is pretty specialized, he doesn't have any all-around techs. In 1400, the lightweight format, Mach really shines. And by shines I mean he's a good mid-tier. Hey, it's a big jump from objectively bottom 5, he's trying. Tanks are popular and consistently powerful and lightweight, and speed builds usually have less than 200 life at absolute max, meaning Cutter gets a chance to do a lot of work. 
Again, the wrong tech at the wrong time is probably enough to lose him the game more often than it would for other mons, but this is definitely the format Mach has the best chance in. But even then, it's sort of as a counterpick build and not something you can really bet the farm on consistently. He's gonna need some bracket luck to perform. Regardless of the format, you're probably going to get Leaf Cutter, Twig Gatling, and at least Twister. You can go a little bit more ham and lightweight and pick up Leaf Gatling and then Twisters or Energy Steel, or both, but the core build is really those three. The rest all serve the same purpose, and your mileage will vary with them given the format. Mach only mixes with Joker, which doesn't move the needle and is slightly above average guts rate of 12. One specific purebred spawn and one white birch spawn with 11, but neither can get grit so this usually ends up being worse overall. So regular old Mach and Ebony are your options. Ebony is fun if you want to check out Twisters with real and cosplay a bad Joker build, but Death Final Joker also won the last Deluxe Cup, so who's to say what's what in this crazy mixed up world? I guess anything is truly possible. Mach might actually be really strong. Maybe I'll enter a mock in the next Deluxe Cup. Maybe it's the spooky season working its way into my veins. Maybe it's the Whippets. Dear Log, it's October 31st. Happy Halloween! I wonder how many of my viewers realized I dropped the whole Doug pretension like halfway through the video until the Whippets line. And I also wonder how many of them realized this whole premise was just thought up as a shaky reason to be able to say Dear Log while talking about a tree. Happy Halloween, you goons. Thank you for watching the tree video. How did I manage to get this done in two weeks? I don't know, man. But I hope it was fun. Mock has a lot of champions in the community, and personally, you know, I've always been torn on him. I really like designs in the game that are out there, and Mock definitely is out there. But he also, like, feels kind of rushed in his animations and gameplay. I don't know. I think he's neat, but I have more fun watching him than I do raising him, for sure. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters for making this video possible. They know I couldn't do it without them, but it bears repeating. They're the best. And you are too if you've ever liked or commented or argued with me about something that watching the video till the end would have answered for you. I appreciate y'all. You can watch me live on Twitch. We're in the middle of the DXBL Season 3 right now, so every Monday we're doing tournaments. But you also get to watch me do other stuff. I just finished a blindfolded run a couple of days ago. It went about as well as you'd imagined. This is actually written before the blindfolded part goes well, so I don't actually know how well it went, but I imagine it will go about as well as I imagined. But yeah, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Screw this up. Dear journal, it's Wait, he says journal?